to do my introduction, my name is Bob Levine. Legacy Financial Partners is my business, life insurance, disability, long-term care, and Medicare. What we're going to do today, and I said we because I'm not going to be the only one standing up today talking about insurance. If you came here expecting to find out statistics, pricing, or anything else to do with numbers and life insurance, you're in the wrong place. We're not going to talk about that. What we're going to talk about are the different types of products that are out there in the world of life insurance. For instance, let's start with Bob's Artarian. I'm going to move this tripod before I trip over it. Bob, stand up for me here. Bob's Artarian. This is, fix them. I'm sorry. This is that. This is whole life insurance. This is the type of insurance that our fathers got, that their fathers got. This is the best of the best. Whole life insurance, as long as you pay your premiums, you've got the coverage, it's called permanent coverage, and the really neat thing about it is, it builds up a cash account. It builds up all this money so that if you ever decide that you don't want it anymore, you can cash out and take the money and run. What a lot of people do, and what a lot of insurance agents have done in the past, is say to people, it's just like an ATM. You can take money out, you can pay it back if you want, but you don't have to because if it, it's left unpaid, they deduct it from your face amount of your policy. No big deal. Bad idea. Really bad idea. So permanent insurance, it's the most expensive type of insurance, but it builds up that cash value that people love to see. Thank you. Fashionista over here. I'm going to pick on you. What's your name? Kendra, stand up, Kendra. Kendra's not playing that game, okay? Kendra, put your hands on your hip. Top and at you. All right, here we go. Here's Kendra. She says, I'm not going to charge you all that money for permanent life insurance. I'm term insurance. I'm not that expensive, but I'm not hanging around forever. You can get me for 10, 20, 30 years, but guess what? After that time, do the snap thing. She is gone. <laughs> there is no cash value. She gives you coverage for a certain amount of time, but that's it. But the good thing is, Kendra won't cost you a lot of money. She's very affordable. Thank you, Kendra. Let's see. Oh, Dilly, Dilly, Dilly. Let me get you up here. Dilly, do this for me, Dilly. Show me your muscles. Wow. All right, there we go. <laughs> no, show me your muscles. Which one? Okay, there we go. <laughs> Dilly says, I am the best of both worlds. I am permanent, like whole life, but I'm affordable, like term. I am what you call universal life. I was thinking about Mr. Universe, but I should have picked him. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, Dilly is what's called universal life insurance. This means that it's permanent insurance, just like whole life, but it's very affordable, just like term. So as long as you pay your premiums, you've got it. You put your arms down now. Thank you. Uh, you've got it, but it doesn't really cost a lot of money, like term insurance. In fact, for a while, it was called perm term. I don't know why, but that's what they did. Can I take your name again? Sadiq. Sadiq. Stand up, Sadiq. Sadiq is the man to be around. Let me tell you something. Sadiq is live, quit, or die. He's got something for you. He's got what's called a blended product life insurance. So whether you need life insurance, long-term care, or you just want to quit and take your money and run, Sadiq has got the plan for you. A lot of people didn't want to get standalone long-term care. The big deal was, what if I never need it? So Sadiq said, great, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you life insurance, and I'll put long-term care inside of it. So if you need the long-term care, you've got the benefit. If you never need long-term care and you just need life insurance, I got that too. And what's really great about this is if you decide you don't want to keep it, you get your money back. So live, quit, or die, Sadiq has got you covered. Thank you very much. Go very far without not picking on you. Here's Erica. Erica says, you know what? What if I just want coverage for my funeral? I don't want to have a large amount of money. I just want my family to be covered 
should I pass away or when I pass away, they don't need to worry about paying for my funeral and all the expenses involved and the hotels and transporting the obituary and da 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 and all that. So what I'd like to do is I just want to get a little amount here, have it paid for so that when I do pass away, my family doesn't have to be burdened with that type of situation at the most inopportune time. That's what's called final expense coverage. That is probably the most unselfish act you can make in the world. If you don't want to get a hundred or a million dollars of life insurance, get just enough to cover you for your burial expenses and that way your family can grieve, they don't have to worry about paying any bills, don't worry about paying the mortician, all that stuff, that's taken care of. You can set your mind at ease, body and soul, mind at ease, relaxation. I was thinking of you when I thought that. Thank you very much. If you want to know why I say award-winning, ask her after the meeting, she knows what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> Nadine says, you know what? Forget about when you die. What if, God forbid, you ever have a heart attack, a stroke, or are diagnosed with cancer? What happens then? Nadine is what we call critical illness coverage. So that if any of those things happen, mm -hmm. stroke, heart attack, or diagnosis with cancer, she's going to give you either a lump sum of money, or she'll spread it out over time, and she'll pay for your treatment, your ongoing care, for people to come in and help work with you. So it's not life insurance per se for when you pass away, but when you don't pass away and still need that money, you don't have to cash out your whole life, or your universal life, or the blended product. This is something that stands alone, and for nothing more than a cup of coffee a day, you can have that type of coverage. Thank you, Nadine. The award-winning. So <laughs> That is what life insurance is. A lot of people think that it's just something you get online or get with an agent and then put it away, but it evolves as your life evolves. I will also tell you a couple inside baseball here. How much time do I have left? Five. I got five minutes left. Great. Here's some things that you may not know that the insurance companies don't want you to know. Anybody know what MIB stands for? Men in Black. No. MIB is a little building outside of Boston, Massachusetts called the Medical Information Bureau. These little hairy gnomes with their long fingernails work in this little building and the MIB has a record of every time you've been to the doctor, emergency room, outpatient clinic, facility, whatever it may be, whenever you go and put in your social security number and you know, pay your bill or whatever, and a bill is sent to and from an insurance company or Medicare, the MIB has a record of that. There are some companies, not all, that do an MIB background check. That's why when you fill out an application, it takes them a while to get back to you because they're doing a background check on you medically to make sure you don't lie on the application. Because I don't know whether you know this or not, but there are some people out there that lie. <laughs> so, yeah. So that is what the MIB does. Not every insurance company contacts the MIB for that background check, but some do. <clears throat> Another thing, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. There are some insurance companies that will not do a background check, whether it's through MIB or anyone else, until after the application is received, processed, your money goes through, and it's in place. Why is that a big deal? It's a big deal because if three months later you have an issue and you have a claim, whatever it may be, if it's something that is not covered, they're going to rescind the offer. Now, it seems, seems kind of unfair, and it is, but that's where you need to get with an insurance agent and find out specifically what type of product is best for your particular needs. You're not inside baseball here. Ah, insurance companies, profit margin and reserves. Everybody thinks insurance companies have a lot of money, and they do. They have a huge amount of money, but they work off of a 0.82 profit margin. The rest of their money is in reserves. You see, insurance companies, not aside from insuring you, the members, have to insure each other. That way, if an insurance company goes out of business, other insurance companies reinsure that company and take over the members in that state or in that area for where that company went out of business, whether they choose to or not. 
So when you see about all the money that they make and the reserves and all the money they have in their bank accounts, yes, they have a lot of money, but their profit margin is razor thin. So while I don't see anyone here, and I don't as well, shedding any tears for the insurance companies, please keep in mind that they also have a razor thin margin that they work from. Okay, at this point I will answer any questions and move on from there. So, anyone have any questions about the exciting world of insurance?